First of all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. Um, this is probably not going to be short. Uh, but it's got to be short because i got to race in eight minutes. Um, documentaries. Einstein on Netflix. It's about Einstein. Uh, you know, and it's from his words, his point of view. Uh, yeah. they, they re he was a pacifist. A okay. little background. I have a degree in chemistry. I love physics. I love math. To the point that, like, I was about to graduate and my advisor was like, you should get a degree in physics. I'm like, dude, I'm three months away from a degree in chemistry. I'm like, I'm not switching majors. you freaking nuts. But he realized I was, I liked physics. My specialty in chemistry is in PCHEM. Physical chemistry, how how electrons move. So, either way, the things about Einstein and about his so-called contribution to the war. He did not contribute to the war. Yeah, he came up with a theory e equals mc squared, pretty famous. But he just created a tool. The basic premise is men are evil. Um, you know, the tools don't don't kill people. It's men. Gun, atomic bomb, you know, nuclear power is probably how we're going to, you know, power the world one day, uh, realistically. So, it ain't gonna, well, to be honest, if you use, uh, sun, solar, that's nuclear power, it just happens to be the bomb is seven light years, seven minutes away. I don't know. How long it takes the sun to get energy to it? Once again, still nuclear. Um, but, you know, the thing plays on his, uh, focuses on his past of his, he was, uh, to his core, he hated war. He wrote, you know, that one letter to Roosevelt, I think it was Roosevelt, uh, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. He wrote the letter saying that, you know, force can only be combated with force, and he wished he had never wrote that letter. Um... But, you know, it, it does play. I thought it was going to be a lot woker than it was, uh, whatever that means. But, you know, it was a good show, good documentary about Einstein, not about his physics. It definitely was more about his politics. And to be honest, to have a show about his physics would isolate 99% of the population because, you know, very few can really understand the nuanced detail of relativity equals mc squared, uh, things like that. So, not that they're not available, but most people don't understand them. And it makes sense. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's man's evil. They didn't mention it, but that's what it is. It's, it's not the tool, it's not the thing, you know. He's everybody's famous physicist, you know, but he just created the tool. He didn't even create the tool. Literally, to him, it was a theory. Uh, you know, it happens to be true, but, you know, between him, you know, Oppenheimer really had no choice in what he was doing. I know that movie came out and everybody loves it and I like it too, um, but... It's just so much bullshit about what the poor guy went through. You know, they, to the end, you know, he couldn't understand how the German people went down that route. You know, he gave up on his German heritage. You know, he said he'd never go back, never support the Germans again. Tortured soul, watching what his country was doing and being done to it. Oh, man. A lot of political in there. Very good. Uh, this is pretty much a rant, though. I get it. I'd say go watch it if you haven't known the... If you want to know about the political side of Einstein. You know, if you want to know about the theoretical side, well, then, you know, you got to go read up on Einstein and... Uh, oh, shit. Electromagnetism. I can't think of his name. Uh-oh. 
This is what happens when you run out of options and you can't think. I'll think of it in a minute. Four equations. Maxwell. Yeah, go read up on Maxwell. By the way, you know you're a nerd if you have a favorite physicist. So mine's Maxwell from Electromagnetic. Uh, how radio waves work, how this phone works. That was all determined by his four equations. Yeah. Um, and then my second one is Feynman. String theory. So Maxwell's equations only work in a classical term. When you get down to quantum mechanics and quantum variability, it doesn't work. Oh shit, I gotta squeeze my... I gotta go to my... I gotta go to my next event. Took a short, short pause because... Uh, Nobody need to see me sit up um, and blow my nose. But uh, one thing I did forget to say when I was ranting this whole time was the whole time in the movie, they show him with his crazy hair, this sort of thing. That was one famous picture where he went to the camera, and he was a jokester to begin with. Well, he didn't like the press, so he would just poke fun at the press, and they were too stupid to know he was making fun of them. He didn't like the press. But uh, the the... The character they have playing Einstein is always the fro Einstein. The, the guy did comb his hair. He wasn't a complete disheveled mess for life. Yeah, he was a scientist. And if you've ever met these uh, people that are way up there and you know their, their life is math and physics, theoretical math, theoretical physics, they're different. They do comb their hair. He wasn't a complete lunatic, but that's how they, he wasn't a complete lunatic with his hair. He did comb his hair, but the whole show, the dude has a fro, so it's not real. Einstein did comb his hair, uh, just not in the show, so, all right, that was my rant. I'll drop you back. Nobody need to see me uh, sit up and blow my nose. It's good. It's a good show. It's political and all about science. They don't bring up his personal stuff either, like. I'm pretty sure he married his cousin at some point. Maybe it was third cousin. I don't know. But he married his cousin. Um, uh, which, that's pretty strange. Yeah, he's tortured. You know, they try to blame him for creating the bomb. It wasn't him. Uh, he did create the tool. You know, big gun. The atomic bomb's a pretty big gun. And this is my other rant. So, the, the Japanese during World War II basically said, every person's a soldier. They were willing to send their people to die but this is going to sound horrible but somebody else came up with a better way to do that so why is it okay and this happens to this day if you look at the hamas and israel and all that stuff all those people um jihads or whatever they they're called you're willing to kill everybody if you send them but if somebody brings that death to you they're the horrific person no you're both horrific but why is it okay for you to kill your people but not okay for somebody else to kill your people you were going to kill them anyway the japanese were not going to give up until every last man was dead well they realized pretty quickly 70,000 people at a time that's a lot of people probably not going to me i'm sure they lost massive the japanese government from the other people lost massive support once they saw what you know hey you, you committed us to die and uh, we don't want that. So, same thing. I mean, how do you... I have, I don't know the answer to that solution. Or how do you come up with that solution? It's getting pretty fucking deep. Um, but, you know, it's not... I, I don't understand it. Why is it okay for you to send your son to die, but not okay when the other person kills him? Yeah, 70,000 people's horrific. Uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, not good. Um collateral effect, horrific. But they were willing to kill him anyway. Why? I, I don't understand that to this day, or probably never will, maybe. I don't know. I can't understand it. Uh, I shouldn't be able to understand it. If anybody watches this video, and I realize nobody does, leave a comment down below on how do you get past that? You know, we want to wipe out people X, and we're willing to die for it. People like kill us, and you see, to me it balances out. It's it's horrible on both sides, but it's a balanced equation, right? You go, there's the nerd, and you maybe it's not. Don't know. 
it's a long ass rant and my ride starts in 20 minutes so either way einstein on netflix pretty good it's all about his political stuff not about his science if you want to know about the science go read his books you're not going to understand that shit if you're not a physicist or a big math nerd but you could go find um uh, i'll read a list of books uh that talk pretty nerdy in uh, normal people terms about scientific concepts like this e equals mc squared zero i call them my uh, i call them my math nerd books and they're books for normal people to help understand these complex things it's a list of books they're all great um so i'll, I'll list them somewhere out here but i'm sent on netflix pretty good sorry for the rant oh, later Alrighty, these are the nerd books so secret house by david bodanus pretty much anything by david bodanus i do like him as an author a uh, cool book about the life, going through life on a microscopic level. Secret Garden, sort of the same thing. Um, there'll be a couple of books by David Botanis on this list. Uh, but they're all good, entertaining reads with a scientific background. Uh, zero talks about the number zero. Um, it seems boring, but it's actually pretty interesting when he talks about it. Uh, the Golden Ratio. So I don't know if you know what he is. Once again, a lot of math in there involved. But it talks about all the places it shows up, and it doesn't show up in, you know, the myth and true math behind it. Once again, E equals MC squared, another David Bodanus book. Uh, talks about it in complex, explains it a little bit more in relativity and where it goes. The number pi, once again, you know, it's just a ratio of a circumference and diameter of a circle. Uh, but why does it help? What's it do? And last is, is how to read a French fry. Um, once again, kitchen science, but bring science to the layman's term. So go read them. They're good.